The Lord be with you. This is the first funeral celebration of life held in this sanctuary since COVID began. And most likely, uh, if, if it was a different person, we may have said, just can't do it. But Jimmy Glass is an institution in this community and in this church. And so we found a way. Um, some are downstairs. Some are at the activities building. We know, we know, in non-COVID times, this place would have been filled, that whole area would have been filled, and people would be out the door because of the man that we're celebrating today. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Jimmy, Alan, Glass, put on Christ. So in Christ, may Jimmy be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet fully been revealed. But when we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that we who shrink before the mystery of death may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your, your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now, Scripture has power, has ability to help us in our times, especially of need, of sorrow, of sadness. In your bulletin, I have printed Psalm 23 so that we may all share it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And now, a reading from Scripture. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Death 
has been swallowed up in victory. And because of that, we shall all have praise. Death has been swallowed up in victory. And so we come here to celebrate Jimmy Allen Glass's life. And you know, when there's a glass sibling celebration of life, I'm handed a folder from one Miss Betty Ann because her heart is such, filled with such sorrow that she cannot speak, but she can write. And she longs to share, to share about one of her beloved siblings. And so now I read what she wrote for us as we celebrate Jimmy's life. Jim, number three child born to Kermit and Della Glass, known as the poster child for the cardio network at Hershey Medical Center, when it became immediately necessary to insert an LVAD, a heart pump device, into his body. He was originally treated at a renowned hospital center. After discovering his heart was functioning at a mere 5% capacity, he was instructed to go home with a five-day-to-live sentence. November 30th would have been the 11th anniversary since receiving his miracle, the heart machine. As we reflect on Jim's life, his sheer determination to get accomplished what was on his mind was very obvious. When he became frustrated or upset with someone, he would invariably run to the most remote, bizarre place on the farm to hide, staying in the same spot for hours if need be. He was a good kid, as long as big brother Bill wasn't enticing him to be the first to try something questionable or should not have been tried at all. Even though his time was taken up with school and farm work, he found time to run with his close friends, the Went Boys and Brother Bill, to the bowling alley and the roller rink. He always blamed his bad bowling scores on being left-handed. That didn't stop him, though, from being an excellent roller skater. Jim started working at the local shoe company, a career spanning over 35 years. He became a master machinist, but most importantly, he met his future wife and partner for life, Doris Wetzel. They were married November 7, 1959. Soon after marriage, they moved into their newly constructed rancher on Keysville Road. A dear little blonde-haired girl named Brenda was born into the family on January 2, 1961. A dear little blonde-haired boy named John was welcomed to the family on August 24, 1962. Since Jim and Doris had large families, there were always lots of parties, picnics, schools, and churches events to attend while the kids were growing up. Jim always had a simplistic but unassuming attitude towards getting about getting farther than 25-mile radius, radius from Keysville Road. Soon it was time to make room in his heart for those little people that do no wrong. Those four grandchildren, Chris and Courtney, Ashley and Jonathan, had an easy road with Pappy. Five more little joys, the great-grandchildren, Colby and Lily and Brody, bring total enrichment to everyone in the family. Always interested in auctions and restorations, Jim decided to take a position in the Emmitsburg Antique Mall. He loved bringing his auction treasures to the mall and asking a huge markup on, on them. He stayed at the mall for 10 years, restoring farm mall tractors became his next passion. He and his cousin Dick often traveled to farms and implement auctions. It was amazing to learn on many occasions their buying power was limited to having a hot dog, maybe a drink. Jim had been a true inspiration to everyone that has shared his journey through the last 10 plus years. He approached the life-saving procedure that was in its infant stage with total confidence in the cardio team, in the intellectual minds responsible for extending his earthly days. His positive personality and relentless character deemed him the perfect person to be known as a pioneer in the most prestigious medical breakthrough. He was so proud to be one of the longest living recipients. Jim was blessed with one of the kindest and most pleasant dispositions. 
There hasn't been a known enemy in all his 82 years. He loved his heavenly father, his church family, his fire company families, his siblings and immediate family held very special places in his heart and in his daily life. We are proudly grateful for Jim's number three position in the family line. May he rest in eternal peace. Betty Ann. Is there anyone else at this moment that would like to share? And now, a reading from Psalm 118. A song of victory. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Yes, praise God. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. Out of distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surround me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surround me. Surround me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surround me like bees. They blaze like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me to the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteousness shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and, it's, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the feastal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord for God's people. Thanks be to God. I chose that scripture because there's a line in there that may mean nothing to anybody else. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jimmy said this all the time. But one day, he came in to the church office, and the church secretary, Amy, was there, and he would come in every Friday. Come in and talk. He'd want his hug. He'd go on his way. It was part of his rounds. You know, the rounds he would take all around that 25-mile radius. He was always on the roads, and some of the family said, maybe at times he shouldn't have been. Maybe his wits weren't as about him as quickly, but they didn't stop him. And so one day he's sitting there in the chair, and he looks over, and he goes, today's the day. And Amy looks over, like, today's the day for what? And he goes, Today is the day, with a smile. And you have the line that's in here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Today's the day. I mean, he could be upset that he always has to wear a vest on him. 
He could be upset about things going on in his life. He could be upset about lots of things. But he didn't say it with a, uh, today's the day. But it was today's the day. Today's the day. Like, the potential of the day is still before him. There's still so much that could happen. And that's how he approached things. Today's the day. What adventure am I going to go on today? When I get in my car and I go down to the, to the, to the fire company, who am I going to see? Who am I going to get to talk to? Who's going to walk through the door? Today's the day. Today's the day. And yes, we could sit here with tears in our eyes and crying and mourning and say, today's the day where we say goodbye. Today's the day where we close the coffin. And we could stay there. Or we can decide to say, today's the day. Today's the day where we celebrate a life well lived. Today's the day where we celebrate the life of a man who changed this community, who was part of protecting it. Today's the day where we celebrate the man who was part of almost the building here at Tom's Creek. Today's the day where we get a chance to celebrate a life well lived. Today's the day. That's how Jimmy would have approached it. He would have approached it in that very way. You know, I had conversations with him, and he was not afraid to share his opinion. And sometimes he'd say stuff that I'd disagree with, and I would just say, well, I look at it this way. And never once did he come back to argue it. He would just say, yeah, I guess you could see it that way. And just move on. Exactly as Betty Ann had said, there wasn't an enemy in the list. He'd share what he thinks. He had his own thoughts and views on things. But if somebody said something else, he'd just say, hmm, okay, see what you're saying there, and just move on. Why? Because today's the day. Today's the day. There's too much else to do in the day to worry about getting into fights or changing someone else's opinion on something. He was just going to be the best Jimmy he could be. Today's the day. Today's the day. And I think that if Jimmy was here, he would say, today's the day for you to think about how are you using your life? How are you using each day God has given you? How are you using it? Is it to lift people up? Is it to help people? Is it to be part of a, of a church or a fire company, an ambulance corps, the military? Be part of something that is greater than yourself? He'd want you to say, today's the day to make a commitment, to figure out how you're going to be some part of something bigger than yourself and how you're going to help protect and change the world. Today's the day. Today's the day. And if we all do that, it's been worth it. We'll have honored a man with a great legacy, a man who did so much. Today's the day. Let us live this day. Yes, with sorrow in our heart, but grateful that we had the opportunity to know a blessed servant of the Lord. Today's the day. Let us pray. Holy One, today is the day that we celebrate the life of Jimmy Allen Glass. Today is the day that we do cry and we say goodbye. But today is the day that you have made. Today is the day that you have given us to live. Today is the day where we can begin to chart a new course. Today is the day where we can once again turn to you and give our lives over to you so that we might know that we have eternity with you.
that we might one day see Jimmy again. Today is the day where we can once again commit that we can't do it on our own and we need you in our lives to help us and to direct us and to lead us. Today is the day where we can do that. So Lord, help us this day. Dry our tears, but help us also to make today the day where we begin to make a greater impact in the lives of our families, our churches, and our communities, and ultimately the world. We pray this in the precious name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now we have the great privilege of hearing George Bucci sing, He Touched Me For Us. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. Those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, give strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you. O God, all that you have given us is yours. 
as first. You gave Jimmy Allen glass to us. Now we give Jimmy back to you. Receive Jimmy into the arms of your mercy. Raise Jimmy up with all your people also. And raise us into a new life. Help us to love and serve you in this world. That we may enter into your joy in the world to come. God of all love, we thank you for all of which of you have blessed us, even to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength, and the gift of abiding presence and promise in days like today of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends, for our baptism and place in your church, with all those who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we give you thank for Jesus, the Christ, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, now may the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, according to the riches of God's glory, grant you to be strengthened with might through God's Spirit in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let us, let us prepare to journey down the road, the same road that <laughs> Jimmy traveled many, 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 yeah, one more, many, times. And may we feel his holy presence with us when we need it most. May he send a sign of love through the skies or across the road, something to remind you of him, to let you know that it's all right. And a sign as you go out there to know that today, today's the day. And now uh, I want to direct you that after this service, we will be going to the Toms Creek Community Cemetery. Uh, so you just go to Toms Creek Church Road onto 140. You'll see the signs there, but it is, it is a, a left and then a right into the cemetery. Um, while it is a short journey, uh, we do ask that your lights and flashers stay on. Uh, and you'll be directed when you get out there how to follow. We, it's, it'll be in an orderly uh, fashion. And uh, we will go there, and then from there, we'll be heading on to the activities building where the family has invited everybody to come for a meal and for fellowship afterwards. Did I get that all right? I know sometimes you come up, but I thought I could do it. Okay. Wonderful. So with that, um, as people leave, you can say your final goodbyes before the casket is closed. You ask that you give us a couple of the family, a couple of minutes um, as you wait in your cars for them to come outside. Uh, those that are helping to carry out the casket, if you can just wait over there, uh, and they will be with you when it is time for that. So now let us go forth in peace. Amen.